Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we're doing anything to escape the weather. If it's raining in England, my bet and the bet of Sporting Rifles Bar and Pace is it's sunny in northwest Sutherland. We go up there with fishing rods to look for trout. First, fishy tales from Deputy First Minister Martin McGuinness as he opens the Irish Game Fair and Country Lifestyle Festival in Antrim, Northern Ireland, one of the few game fairs not to be cancelled this summer due to flooding. Hi, welcome to Shane's Castle, the home of the Irish Game Fair. And there's a story here today. Hounds, large fish, big eels, and political. Now the world knows that Martin McGuinness is a politician, but not even the world's wife knows that he's a fisherman. One of the most interesting advice that I've had in recent times was to come and open the Irish Game Fair here at Chains Castle and I'm absolutely honoured and delighted to do it. I've always felt very close to country people. Uh, I'm the grandson of an initial farmer, so I'm very close to the earth and uh, spent all of my summer holidays on a farm and hated come back into the city. So I love to be around people who are involved in country sports and as you well know, I am a passionate fly fisherman. Yeah. You're known on an international stage as a leading politician, but a lot of people won't know that you're a passionate angler, and I believe from a very, very early age. Yeah, I've fished since I was five or six years of age. I took up fly fishing about 14 uh, or 15 years ago, and have what I think is a unique record that the first time I went to fish, Fly fish for salmon, I caught an eight pound salmon on the second cast. Was, was that beginner's luck or, or have you done better since? <laughs> no, well? it's probably beginner's luck. Yeah, I've done much better since. I mean, one morning I caught three salmon on the River Moy between half past six in the morning and nine o'clock. Okay. So uh, I've, I've been, I've learnt a lot over the years. Take me through the hooking and the playing. What happened? Well, what happened was that I was with my wife and children. Uh, we had a small house just outside Bunkrana in Donegal and uh, we arrived late at night. Uh, I got them into the house and I said to my wife, it's beginning to get dark, I'm going to go down to the river for the last half hour. I went down to the river, I had a fly rod and uh, a curry's red shrimp fly. I cast the fly into the river, nothing happened. I threw it in again, uh, almost instantaneously, and the rod bent, and it was absolutely an amazing feeling. Uh, I was very immature at that time in terms of my angling skills. I pulled the rod so hard that the rod broke in two, <laughs> but the salmon stayed on the line. I was standing up in the bank. Okay. I didn't know what to do. The only thing I could do was get down into the river. The salmon was lying at the side of the river, lift it with two hands and throw it up onto the bank. So you jumped into the river? I did jump into the river, yeah. <laughs> great, great. Well, these days with all the hustle and bustle of politics, can you get out at all? Yeah, I, every year, I, religiously, I, I make sure I get two or three days fishing. There's nothing I love more than get way out into the countryside. So, because Donegal's within easy reach of where I live, I go there. And uh, over the last couple of years, I've caught some really fantastic sea trout uh, in Donegal. So I, I love that. It's really an amazing experience. The Deputy First Minister is here today to open the Irish Game Fair, the 50th fair organised by the Great Game Fairs of Ireland. And I particularly like the emphasis that there is on getting young people involved in it because there could be no better activity than being involved in the outdoors. Martin McGuinness is amongst anglers here. Top chef Emmett McCourt is involved in Feast or Famine, an internet-based culinary history of the region. Obviously it's the 50th anniversary of the game fairs, you know, and Martin himself is a, is a great fisherman, passionate angler. And it's great to see him here celebrating the salmon. I'm a passionate fly fisherman myself, so it's great to see the First Minister here. And, uh, and it's a great, great setting, great location here at Change Castle. And uh, hopefully we're going to do some great cooking tomorrow, you know, with the salmon and uh, the Loch Nail too itself, you know, so it should be good. And of course you cannot have a game fair without terriers, especially in Ireland. Your dogs are amazingly entertaining. Is it difficult to get them to that level of training? It's not difficult. We do spend hours and hours with the dog. The dogs are my life, the Jack Russells. 
It's the way I've been brought up. I've kept them for 32 years. It's the way I've had them, and I just I spend my life with the dogs. If I'm not working, I'm with the dogs, and the dogs take priority every time. The game fair takes place at Change Castle Estate in Antrim, and flowing through it is one of the province's best rivers, the River Main. We are constantly campaigning to make sure that the politicians understand that they cannot continue the way they're doing, issuing licenses for fish farms, issuing licenses for mink farms, uh, even forestry, even uh, the way in actual fact pylons or turbines go into the sides of mountains, of boggy lands, that really we must protect the salmon spawning beds. The Irish Game Fair is a great launch pad for new products. Here's the new 4x4 from Dacia. This is the new Dacia Duster launched at Shane's Castle. The car is available in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. And you have an engine choice of 1.6 litre petrol or the 1.5 litre diesel. The car is priced from 8995 for the two-wheel drive version and it seems like a bit of a bargain. It'll be very interesting to see how it fares in the field. Every year Game Fair organiser Albert Titterington chooses one of the local shooting, fishing, hunting themes for the Game Fair. This year it's a shaggy dog story when John and I were discussing the dog, we had in our mind's eye a large black ghostly hound. And we searched about for a while and then we talked to Tim Finney, who is a well-known breeder of hounds. And I said, I want a black hound, at least a yard at the shoulder, one of the biggest in Ireland, racy looking, looks if it could kill a wolf. And he said, I have just such a hound and it's called Aramis. Bratislavian stock, would you believe? Um, Tim was judging Bratislavian and saw this huge black hound and he wanted one. Now for more up-to-date lurchers, the Master McGrath. It's a race to find the Usain Bolt of lurchers. Is it all in the breeding or is it in the training or is it, in, what is it? Well, like I've probably said a few times, you know, like I have a strict trainer regime, which a lot of people probably do as well. Uh, breeding obviously helps. You know, you can't just give somebody a dog that's not going to make it, no matter what training you do. Oh, we'd all have winners, like racehorses, we'd all have a, we'd all have a Grand National winner. But it helps if you've, you've got a, a, a good backbone to your line. Yeah. And then it's all about whatever wee secrets that you all have. Yeah. yeah. And are you going to tell us any of those no, secrets? Because <laughs> I'd have to kill you. <laughs> well, those were the heats for the final of the Master McGrath. The racing was superb, far, far too close to call. Who's going to win? Your guess as good as mine. Let's go and watch. Was the Master McGrath something you always aim for? I was up here last year myself and the family and the brother of mine and the other lads. And uh, when I seen him, what the Master McGrath meant, do you know what I mean, to Ireland, England and Scotland and the whole lot. I went home last year and I had nothing in my head only today. We went to Borough and we got her qualified and we just sort of melted her out with him for this. She's three and a half year old. Her father was called Scooby. He, was, he had 70 runs and 70 wins, which is some achievement. And now you're the best of the best. Yes, yes. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Finalist last year, finalist this year. Are you going to come back next year and make it? Yes, I'm here next year, without a doubt. <laughs> Are you going to bring the same dogs or? Uh, hopefully, maybe the same dog, maybe a few new ones, just wait and see. Okay, <laughs> so you're not letting anything away? No. <laughs> Good luck. No. Well done, Rose. Thank you. Well, this has been the Irish Game Fair at Shane's Castle. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I certainly have. And I hope to see you again here next year. Don't forget there is one more Game Fair. That's another Game Fair at Burr Castle, County Offaly, on the 25th, 26th of August. I'll be there. I hope you'll join me too. In the meantime, this is where Charlie normally says, push buttons, click your computer, blah 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 visit the website. I don't know what he's talking about. All I know is you've got to tune in next week. Feel Sports Britain. It's going to be brilliant. Martin McGuinness, often in the news. Now some real news. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. We start with news of the CLA Game Fair 2012 at Beaver Castle. There are rumblings that the largest outdoor event in Europe may have to be cancelled because of weeks of heavy rain. The CLA insists the fair will go ahead. We've been told some contractors putting up stands on the ground at Beaver Castle have been ringing their standholder clients to remind them of their cancellation terms. Whatever happens, visitors should be prepared for a wet beaver and wear the necessary protection.
Another fair that's fallen foul of the British summer weather is the British falconry and raptor fair that was meant to take place this weekend, the 14th and 15th of July at Althrop. However, one that's bucked the trend and went ahead last weekend was the Great Irish Game Fair in County Antrim. It was a great success, as you can see from our review. However, in a bizarre accident after Field Sports Channel cameras had left the site, one of the reenactment soldiers reportedly left his ramrod in his gun after loading it with powder and wadding. He fired and it injured an onlooker. Shooting writer Mike Yardley is to launch a shotgun. The new over and under is made by Shropshire gunmaker Boxall and Edmiston. It's really exciting to see a gun with your own name on it. After months of effort, Peter and his team have put in a colossal amount of work and here it is, it's a beautiful gun, it's coming to the market at a very fair price and it shoots wonderfully as well. What more could you want? Gamekeepers are to get a media makeover. First there was Mellors in Lady Chatterley's Lover, then there was Hagrid in Harry Potter. Now a new gamekeeper, superhero, is about to hit the world of popular culture. Movie director Guy Ritchie has been developing a comic book called The Gamekeeper and it's set to become a film. This gamekeeper is neither sexy nor cuddly, however, he is a dark killer who spends more time fighting off mercenaries than tending to game birds. The film is due out this year on Yahoo screen. The Countryside Alliance has been running an amateur photographic competition called Hunting Under the Act. The joint winning photos are Wednesday Hound and Child by Tracy Broadbent in North Wales and of February Morning with the Axe Vale by Lewis Gillingham, who's 17 from Honiton in Devon. Simon Cooper from fishing agency Fishing Breaks has sent in this photograph to cheer up all those fly fishermen amidst all the rain. It was recently taken by Malcolm Brown, who recently captured it while photographing kingfishers at a river near Basingstoke. And finally, we have two silly photographs that were sent by email that are doing the rounds. The first one shows an extraordinarily painful accident with a spear from a spear gun. The second, also bottom related, became the subject of a popular caption competition. The winning caption is, if she hasn't, she soon will. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Some of the best summer sport I enjoy is in the Northwest Highlands with a trout rod. I'm off there now with Baron Pace from Sporting Rifle. Nothing I like better than slipping away in June or July with a couple of friends to go fishing for trout in the high hill locks of Sutherland in the Northwest Highlands. This water is let by the Kinloch Burvey Hotel, which is just 10 miles south of Cape Roth. There are plenty of fish to catch, and this wild landscape can catch us unawares, or, in the case of this happy camper, underwares. He fell in while crossing a lock and is now enjoying the old Scottish pastime of trying to get dry. Friends this year include Byron Pace, who is best known for writing about shooting for Sporting Rifle magazine. We're fishing for trout. What's the attraction? Why not something more exciting? Well, you know, I, I do a lot of fishing around the British Isles, but for me, trout fishing, especially wild trout fishing in the hill locks, which are scattered across the north of Scotland, just have this amazing appeal because it is wild trout that uh, are so beautifully marked and the scenery is just stunning as well. Uh, it really is just lovely to be out on the hill. They're not the biggest fish in the world, but uh, they do take with great vigour and they're terrific to play, aren't they? Well, is, is, that, is, that, is that the thing for you? It, it's really not about the size. I mean, it is quite incredible how hard these little fish fight. Um, and it really just is about uh, enjoying the beauty of such perfectly finned fish. You know, I, I'd rather go and catch uh, half a dozen half pound brown trout than go to a stocked fishery and catch a, a 10 pound monster. And you are currently starring in The Shooting Show. What's, uh, what's coming up on The Shooting Show soon? Uh, well, what you're going to be uh, seeing me doing is a bit of coastal rabbiting. Uh, is that, that sounds like you're coming in from the coast and shooting them from boats. <laughs> Not quite. I mean, I, I actually don't live too far from the coast on the, on the east coast, but it's all in the rabbiting that I'm doing. I, I shoot a lot of rabbits, but this is going to be a little bit different right, right on the shore. So uh, a bit of variety. From Scotland to the wider world, it's Hunting YouTube. 
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. Well, we have to say sorry to everyone who's been sending us videos using Shared With You on YouTube. We just found them. So here are the top eight you have kindly sent through. Lots of foreign sport. Thanks to Mats Eriksson from Sweden for sending us Tredskeljak med Norbottens Pets del 1, which apparently means going on a tree dungeon hunt with a spitz. This is a well shot video about the Scandinavian sport of sending off dogs to find capercaillie in trees and to bark at them until the shooter catches up and has a go at the birds with the rifle. Not sure where the dungeon comes in, you'll have to put that down to the online translation service we have to use with foreign sounding films. Team Wild Hunting is after Black Bear in Newfoundland using a Ruger number one in 450 400 Nitro Express. Settle yourself down for 12 minutes of Team Wild style thrills and bear all adventure. I won't give away the ending except to say, well, what do you think? It's our old friend and viewer Rijk from the Netherlands who sends us this lovely film of goat hunting on the other side of the world in New Zealand. Isn't that a joy about YouTube? A Dutch shooter likes a Kiwi film about shooting so sends it to me a shooter in the UK to put it in front of shooters all over the rest of the world. Feral goats, even upside down ones are a major pest. To eliminate them is impossible and the best and most sensible method of control is culling. Why Kari Moana gets given the job of taking out a few hundred of them in a property in the central North Island. We're off to Ireland for a spot of walks up woodcock at the end of last season with Gurona Bra. Filming with gun cams and hat cams is extraordinarily difficult but this film pulls it off. Good shooting too. You can make your own animations on the internet and it is bad news for the pro gun movement. This film is barely worthy of the title animation including as it does little movement and truly awful synthesised voices. In a film with a title copied straight from an SEO basics website called www.learnhowtoshootguns.com, JTC Omega does just that, exhorting viewers to learn how to shoot and defend your home. If you are convinced by this film, you probably ought to be told not to take JTC Omega at his or her word and actually shoot your home. Back in the UK, here's an original film idea that gets our thumbs up. Country Pursuits TV is using his air gun as a fly. SWAT. We hear a lot from YouTube about what air gun to use on which quarry species. Well, for the record, Country Pursuits TV recommends a special edition 0.25 John Baggett tuned BSA Ultra. And the fly pellet of choice is, of course, the 25.4 grain JSB King. Silly of you if you thought otherwise. Now, Country Pursuits TV was actually after rats when his flies were undone, so to speak. And back in the traditional air gun hunting world, Air Gun Hunter UK offers us anti rat campaign part two. Love the witty intro with the chickens and the rat shooting's good fun too. Finally, Air Gun Gear Show abandoned YouTube in what looked like a huff earlier this year, but it seems to be back. In this film it gets what it claims is the first review of the Daystate Wolverine in 303 as Tony Bielis, managing director of Daystate, talks through the details of the rifle. Review may be a strong word, but the film still has lots going for it. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, send it in via YouTube, or email me the link charlie at channel. TV. Well, we're back next week, and I'm on the verge of being able to tell you more or less what's in the programme, but I better not, just in case it all falls to pieces. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit one of these squares just here, and you can subscribe to our programme or go to our shows page on YouTube, www.youtube.com slash show slash Field Sports Britain, that's it, or click on one of these squares here, you should be able to get there. And you can subscribe to just Field Sports Britain, or you can go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, scroll down to the bottom, put your email address into the constant contact box there, or click to like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. This has been Field Sports Britain. Now, many of you said that we sold out last week to sponsors such as Coleman's Mustard. I'd like to say that is completely untrue. 